ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار Brothers and sisters we know that in Islam Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has designated a few special times in the year a few special times when we are asked to increase in our worship and we are asked to do more in his sake and as qatada once mentioned he said that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has reserved and selected elites from his creation in many different ways Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created many angels but a select number of those angels are messengers Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created a multitude of humans you and I but amongst them some are messengers Allah yastafi min al-malaikati rusula wa min an-nas Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created the entire earth the entire universe and inside that earth there is a special space reserved for the masajid Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created speech the way that you and I talk and amongst all the speech that's ever given the best speech is the speech of Allah wa khayr al hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa khayr al kalam kalam Allah and so in every single thing Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has created there is the best of them and time has no exception to this Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala created the months and as Prophet sallallahu alaihi mentioned in Sahih Bukhari he said that Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has returned time to its original state as it was intended when the heavens and the earth were created Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala intended for there to be 12 months as the Quran says in عِدَّةَ الشُّهُورِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ إِثْنَا عَشَرَ شَهْرًا فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ مِنْهَا أَرْبَعَةٌ حُرُمٌ ذَلِكَ الدِّينُ الْقَيِّمُ فَلَا تَظْلِمُوا فِيهِنَّ أَنفُسَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulated, mandated, made it that we would have 12 months. It does not come from the Greek or the Romans, it comes from Allah. And of the 12 months that we were given, four of them are sacred. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the correct path, this is the religion on the truth. Do not wrong yourselves during this time. Now, it is very easy for us to fall into thinking that we have Ramadan, a very special blessed time. And then the next big milestone, we had that one Eid, we look forward to the next Eid, and what happens around that Eid? We think about Dhul Hijjah. But one of the lesser known milestones that we as believers, we as those that want to come closer to Allah SWT, should keep in mind is that there's in fact a sacred month before Dhul Hijjah, and it is a sacred month that you and I are in right now. And that is the month of Dhul Qa'da. Prophet said that there are four sacred months. There's Rajab, Dhul Qa'da, the month we're in, the month after Dhul Hijjah, and then the month after Muharram. And these four months are called sacred, similar to when we go to Mecca and we go to the sacred mosque, Masjid al Haram. That there are special rules 
and a special observance that should be given during this time. As Qatada mentioned in his tafsir of these verses, he says that the people of knowledge, the people of wisdom, the people of understanding, understand that Allah made some of these things special and they venerate it because Allah made it special. Before we go into any specific reasons on why, first we do it based just solely on the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it special. And that is reason enough for us to treat it special. That our Lord, the one who created us made it special, so we should treat it special. And then the reasoning comes in as we'll go in this khutbah inshallah. But first and foremost is because it's special. You know as uh, children, maybe the first few times we went to the masjid, our parents told us, you know, stay quiet and stay dignified and don't cause a ruckus in the masjid. When you talk to your elders, don't talk loudly. When you talk about the Prophet, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We were taught all of this. And perhaps we didn't understand why the masjid was special. It seemed like another place like somewhere else. We didn't understand why the Prophet sallallahu should be venerated. But as we grew older, that understanding seeped in. But that respect came first. And so we as Muslims, Samir wa ta'ana, we listen and obey. We understand this is a time of veneration and respect. We, we treat it as such. And in fact, this respect and veneration was something that predated the coming of the Prophet sallallahu the Arabs would already treat this time as sacred. And even in the repeated hostilities that they would have, and they would fight over everything to the point of bloodshed. If someone said something the wrong way, disrespected someone, took someone's land, took someone's property, took someone's life, there was always a reason to fight. But even they, in these four months, would take a step back. And we as Muslims are taught that and more. That this is a time that we should try our best. Already we shouldn't be doing it regularly. But it is a added emphasis during this time. As Ibn Abbas said, that in these four sacred months, if you were to do good deeds, your good deeds are magnified. You get bonus points automatically. But on the flip side, if you do something wrong in this time, that is also magnified. If you read Quran in front of the Kaaba, you will get more reward. But if you are to curse or steal or say something vile, you will have more punishment as a result of where you're doing it. And similarly for us, it is when we are doing it. Brothers and sisters, Dhul Ka'da, it comes from the word Qu'ud, which means to rest. And one of the reasons given behind this is that because it is the beginning of a three-month period of sacredness, this is when you take that step back. This is when you sit. As Prophet said that when you get angry, the first thing you should do is what? Sit. Meaning you compose yourself. You calm yourself down. You soothe yourself. And it is a time for reflection to begin. It is a time when the hustle and bustle of your regular life takes a pause, and you may still continue in some activities, but overall, there's a diminished activity from the outward sense, and you start looking inwards. Dhul Qa'da traditionally would be the time when pilgrims would start going for Hajj. They didn't have a plane ride that would get them there within a day. It would be a trip that would take days upon weeks upon months. And so even for those that lived in the Arabian Peninsula, in Dhul Qa'da, in this month, they would begin the travels. And therefore, one of the wisdoms behind the sacred months happening in this succession, with Hajj being in the middle, were that the pilgrims were essentially granted security on the way to Hajj and on the way back. And that is why when the Prophet ﷺ was attempting to perform the pilgrimage and he was stopped, it was a big deal. It was like breaking the UN conventions on what was acceptable. It was a huge travesty and, and that's why it was such a big deal. Because not only were they stopping people from being pilgrims, but they were stopping them during these sacred months. Brothers and sisters, perhaps nowadays we do not encounter warfare all the time in our personal capacity. But we do more than ever experience this need to always be productive, 
this need to always be very efficient and optimize everything and have no breaks for everything and not only be efficient in doing one thing, but we try to accomplish five things at the same time. We might be in a meeting at work and at the same time we're trying to read some Quran and at the same time we're trying to send another email on something that has nothing to do with the meeting and at the same time we're trying to call our family and at the same time we're thinking about what we're going to have for lunch or dinner and constantly we're trying to do a lot of things together. Whether you're in school, in college, working, even if you're retired, this need to completely fill our minds and thinking that rest is not valuable or productive or thinking that focusing on one thing is not productive is something that we're taught in the West in a world that really focuses on the dunya and just maximizing and squeezing out as much juice as they can from a worker before they're put out to the pasture, before they're told you're too old and you can't work anymore. They want to get maximum amount for you and we fall into that trap. And we, even as Muslims, when we greet each other, the first thing we say, Assalamu alaikum brother, Assalamu alaikum sister. Even meeting someone for the first time, and the second question we immediately ask, what do you do? What is your occupation? We define ourselves by our jobs, whether we have a job or not. If we're in school, what are you studying to become? What are you studying to do what type of job in the future? Or even if you're retired, what did you do when you did work? And we have a hard time talking to each other aside from if we're able to talk about work or not. And many of us, even while we're talking about work, we like talking about how busy we are. Oh, you know, yesterday I, I, I burned the midnight candle oil. You know, I, I was up very late. And oh my God, you won't believe the number of meetings I was in. We are happy and we feel valuable when we are very busy. And the busyness doesn't just stop at 5 p.m. when our laptops close. Some it doesn't close even then, but for most of us, when that computer, when you walk away from your kibbutz, your office, your desk, the busyness doesn't stop. Immediately, you take your kids and you put them in five different sports programs and you know all sorts of enrichment, all good things, but we're constantly keeping ourselves busy. And we come home and we have to have some special activities and we do these and we go to sleep late and we, we wake up early and we take pills to fall asleep because we're so overcharged and then in the mornings we're taking coffee to wake ourselves up. We're doing things that are very unhuman, unnatural. And you will see throughout the Quran and Sunnah there is an imperative not to always be this way. To in fact take a step back at times and that taking a step back can be the most productive thing that you do. Getting proper rest, getting proper relaxation is also considered amongst ibadah. One of the salaf he says that just as I look forward to getting good deeds during the day, I look forward to the night and my time asleep as a time of earning reward. I don't think, you know, the same way that the stock doesn't just stop when we're paying attention, we're not paying attention. In the same way, they used to believe, as we should, that I am being rewarded even when I'm sleeping. And his companions were asking that even when you're sleeping, you're not even conscious. Why would you think that you'd get rewarded at that time? He says, because when I go to sleep, I go to sleep with the intention that this will rejuvenate and rest my body properly so that when I wake up, I can go back to serving my family, my Lord, my community. It's a mindset shift, brothers and sisters. That for us, especially in this godless society where everything is measured by what you can see, it is hard to measure rest or the value of it. And instead, all we value is what you can actually see. But if we allow ourselves to be consumed by this, we will be less productive total. But even putting that aside, we will be less rested, we will be less good to our families, we will be less good to our Lord. And therefore we will always feel like we're rushing from thing to thing until the next thing you realize it's 1 a.m. and you still barely were able to get your ayatul kursi and 
a little bit of dhikr time in, you quickly say it, you quickly finish your four rakahs, you might even be making up other salawat and you, you go to sleep exhausted. But what we learn, especially in this month, Dhul Ka'da, the month of rest, the month literally of someone sitting, is that there is great benefit in taking that step back. Allah SWT tells us in Surah Ali Imran, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِّئُلِ الْأَلْبَابِ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ Verily, in the creations of the heavens and the earth are signs for those who reflect. They are ones that remember Allah when they are standing qiyaman وَقُعُودًا ذُلْ قَعْدًا The month of sitting, the month of rest. When they are standing, when they are sitting, وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ And even when they're on their sides, even when they're laying down. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they contemplate, they do that deeper reflection on the creation around them. And they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا You did not create us for no reason. You did not create us just so that we could exist and we're a scientific experiment and then we die. No, there's a deeper reason each one of us were brought into this earth. There is a reason that our parents could have had so many other siblings, but they, Allah SWT chose us to come into the world. Allah SWT chose our specimen to make it. Allah SWT chose each one of us to live where we live, do the job that we do, and have the family that we were born into. There's a deeper reason behind all of this. But shaitan and his allies don't want us to be reflective and think. He does not want us to have the time to pause and to be able to think. And therefore, you will see even in popular culture now, that back in the day they had coliseums with all these different games, and now the days you have off, you have Sunday night football, you have basketball, on the other day you have soccer, you have cricket, you have all these things that inherently aren't bad. But in the few moments you get to yourself, automatically you're consumed with all these different entertainment. And in the few moments of quiet that you might have on your way to work, on your way back from work, we shackle ourselves needing to always listen to something. And many listen to things that aren't appropriate or approved by Allah SWT. And they include satanic lyrics and satanic words that in fact make us go even further away from him. And we ask Allah to protect us from that. Brothers and sisters, Dhul Ka'da is an underrated gem, something that many may not pay attention to. But Allah SWT told us to pay attention to it. And we are in the thick of it. The three white days, the three middle days of the month, just passed yesterday. We still have two more weeks. Let us treat these two weeks as a time of deep reflection. أقول قولي هذا والصفر لي ولكم السائل المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه Brothers and sisters, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a hadith graded as fair by Sheikh Al-Albani he says افعلوا الخير دهركم وتعرضوا نفحات رحمة الله فإن لله نفحات من رحمته يصيب بها من يشاء من عباده The Prophet ﷺ said that take advantage of your time and do good in the time that was given to you and then he says something very interesting and he says, and take advantage of the gentle winds of mercy that you may experience from the mercy of Allah. For verily, Allah has winds of mercy that He gives to His servants as He pleases. <coughs> Many of us, when we go for vacation, we go to the side of a shore, we go to the side of a beach, and we're looking at these beautiful waves, and you feel that nice breeze coming upon you and you just feel yourself being lulled you know into this relaxation imagine someone says and says okay now I'm gonna start doing my workout and you know start 
getting myself very exhausted or, okay, I've had 30 seconds of wind, I'm gonna go back home. I had my little bit, I, I had my scheduled wind for the day and then we, we move on. We would feel bad for them that you're in such a beautiful place and you're having these nice feelings happening, these moments for you to just take a deep breath and just get some proper rest in. And even then you're compartmentalizing it and you're not doing what you need to do. But we do the same thing in our lives, brothers and sisters. There are times that, yes, we'll be very busy and we need to hustle and we need to work really, really hard and we need to provide for our families and we need to work a little bit harder. But it's not always like that. You and I are witnesses of this, that there are times when the world kind of slows down a little bit, where you're going through your to-do list and you've actually somehow gone to the end of it and there isn't a lot left to do. But what we do in those cases, we, we try to fill that void and instead of using that time as rest, we use that time to busy ourselves more. We call someone up and we try getting involved in their drama. We start watching shows that you know, increase our heart rate and get us to feel certain things as opposed to using that time for rest. Like, no, no, we feel this need to be on a constant rush of adrenaline, all in this constant high. And we're not acknowledging that we need that time off. Allah SWT tells us in Surah An-Naba, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلِ الْأَرْضَ مِهَادَ وَالْجِبَالَ أَوْتَادَ وَخَلَقْنَا كُمْ أَزْوَاجَ وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتَ وَجَعَلْنَا لَيْلَ لِبَاسَ وَجَعَلْنَا نَهَارَ مَعَاشَ After talking about majestic things such as the mountains and the earth and talking about how Allah created us in perfect pairs, He immediately says, وَجَعَلْنَا نَوْمَكُمْ سُبَاتَ Allah has made your sleep as a time of rest for you. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسَ And He has made the night a cover for you. A time, as Qatada mentioned, that it's a time for us to get some respite, uh, a break from the world. وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ لِبَاسَ And then back to the hustle and bustle. And so you think about it that naturally around sunset, and you know, subhanAllah, very late in life, I... You know, you used to hear about the evening adhkar and perhaps a, a point of benefit for all of us. And I used to hear that the, the end of day adhkar that we should do, in my mind, I used to think that's when you, before you go to sleep. That's like after Isha, that is late at night. But I grew to learn that the end of day adhkar is actually from Asr until Maghrib. It's actually before the new day begins, before the night starts at sunset. That's when the wind down time would begin. And the Prophet ﷺ, regularly after Isha, he would head home and he would rest immediately. Versus, you know, the technology can be very good, but now we have electricity and we have lights and we have our laptops and we have our phones and we have endorphin boosting things. We have our blue light. We have all of these things that just push us further and further from the natural state. And whereas Allah SWT made the night as a cover, as a time for us to rest, we get even more agitated during that time, to our own detriment. Dhul Ka'idah, brothers and sisters, is that time to realize we need to take a step back. During Dhul Ka'idah, to just conclude and to explain this point with an actual example, the Prophet ﷺ decided to go for Umrah and Hajj. He decided to go for the pilgrimage in Dhul Qa'da, in this month that we are in, after many years of being away from his treasured homeland. And he goes out with an estimated number of around a thousand of his companions. And they go to Mecca, fully intending to do the pilgrimage, all of them wearing their pilgrim clothes, their ihrams. <coughs> and the disbelievers stopped them. And they literally are just there sitting in wait, waiting for the ability to come. They sent Uthman bin Affan and a whole slew of incidents happened there. But they are literally unable to accomplish what they came there to do. And on top of that, the disbelievers send their own emissary, Suhail bin Amr. And they negotiate some terms that from a secular, materialistic, worldly view... The Quraysh one got the upper hand on that contract. And the Muslims 
seemingly were on the losing side of that contract. The negotiations were not in their favor. And the, disbelie- the, the believers, in fact, in this case, were very worried and you know, felt really bad and questioning what is happening. Aren't we on the truth? Aren't we with the messenger of God? Aren't we with the best of creation? Aren't we the best? Gener- like, what is happening? And in the midst of all of these feelings, Allah SWT reveals down, إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا we have given you a clear fetch, a clear victory. This thing that you think that you lost in, that you weren't able to go to the pilgrimage, and for 10 years there's a peace treaty, but during this time, anyone that becomes Muslim has to be returned. And all of these things that felt quite unfair to them, <coughs> Allah SWT is saying it is a clear victory for you. You may not see it as a victory, but it is a victory for you. This happened during Dhul Qa'dah, and if you think about it, you abstract it just a little bit. The Muslims want to do something good. They want to be productive and go for the pilgrimage amongst the best deeds you can do. And they were unable to do that, and they were not sure of the next time they'd be able to do that, and they were literally sitting and waiting, but it was marked as a clear victory for them. For many reasons, uh, which would take up a full khutbah on, on its own. But one blessing that we can take from it is that the Muslims took a step back and obeyed the commands of Allah and respected that treaty. They understood this was not the time right now. And in our lives, if we took the time to realize that there are times that we need to take a step back, we also would benefit a lot. I was talking to a brother who's about to get married, and we ask Allah to bless his union. And I was asking him, how do you feel as someone who's about to get married as a, as a groom-to-be? And he's like, brother, I just honestly have not had the time to even think about my marriage and my life after. I've just been so busy running around and getting ready for the wedding and preparing everything. And I said, Alhamdulillah, that's all good, and may Allah bless you. But you will really miss out on these happy moments, amongst the most precious of moments in your entire life if you don't take some time back to just think about what's about to happen, that you're about to become a family, that you're about to become the head of a household, that you're about to embark on this new journey together as a couple, that Allah has made this time of mercy, affection, and so on and so forth. All the things around marriage and all the excitement and all the things that you can do there, you're not taking that time to do it. You really need to. And alhamdulillah, he did. And he said, I, I'm more excited now. I'm, I'm more enthused. And that, in fact, made the preparations more sweeter for him. It wasn't just about crossing things off a to-do list, but no, he's doing this for his wife, for his family, for his community. And the same thing for us, brothers and sisters. Recently, scientists have seen in a study that even when we sleep, our brains are almost, if not at the same level of activity as when we are awake. When we are in that deep REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep, our brains are actually not completely off. During that time, they are actively processing what happened during the day. They are trying to understand what happened, make it all make sense, and then calm you, and then start thinking about what's happening in the future. Many of us, you know, we think that we'll get the answer if we just keep at it. You know, we have a problem at work, we have a problem at school. But then we finally succumb to our exhaustion, we fall asleep and wake up and we're like, Eureka, we suddenly know what to do. It's from a miracle from Allah. And now if we know this as Muslims, that our sleep isn't a time of just idleness or just wasting, but it is in fact a way for us to relax and process and get that proper respite before we go back to our lives, perhaps we will treat it more importantly. Brothers and sisters, we are in a very sacred month, Dhul Qa'dah. Only one-third, only 33% of the entire year is given for the sacredness. And we are just beginning it. And so let's take full advantage of this. And if we are going for Hajj, inshallah, may Allah bless you and make it even more impactful. But even for those of us that are staying back that aren't going for Hajj this year, there is a chance for us, as as Allah taught us, to take that step back right now, to sit. 
to think, to contemplate. I'll end with this quote that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, said, that he said, for me, an hour of deep reflection and contemplation is better than for me to be praying actively for many hours. Because while that is a good activity, getting closer to Allah and really letting it seep into our hearts and therefore into our habits and actions of the future is far more superior. Never treat your time of rest as a time of waste. In fact, it is a time of goodness for you and a time for you to reinvest in yourselves. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقد عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب واقم الصراحة